What's up guys, it's your boy Alan again, back with another video. So today we're going to take a look at some videos on uh, how to make some classic cocktails that were sent to me online. In my opinion, the classic cocktails are the most important thing that you need to get down. They are the foundation of any serious bartender. And before you even consider making your own signature drinks or improvising a current recipe that you know, you got to get these guys down first. So um, yeah, let's take a look at some of these videos. Okay, so the first one here is going to be a mint julep. Hi guys, my name is Andrea with Bricks Nightclub and Sunset Lounge in Miami. Today I'm going to be making for you a Woodford Reserve mint julep. So, it's similar to a mojito, only it has bourbon. You're going to start off. The mojito is actually derived from the mint julep. Your glass, add your limes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's no citrus in a mint julep. You're going to take a little bit, like a teaspoon or so, of some sugar, just a pinch of mint, and a little rose's lime juice. What? What is she doing? First of all, you don't, like I said, there's no citrus in a mint julep. So mint julep is bourbon, sugar, mint, and crushed ice. That's it. You're going to go ahead and muddle that all together. You're going to add your ice. Now you're gonna take your sour mix. Whoa, what? Oh my God. Oh. And you're also gonna take your Woodford Reserve. What a waste of perfectly good bourbon. Mix that bad boy up. Again, there shouldn't be citrus in the drink, hence you should not shake it. Pour it into your highball. Don't forget to add your Sprite. Sprite! She's definitely not making a mint julep. This is some kind of butchered mojito with bourbon. She just substituted rum with the bourbon and the soda water with Sprite. And top it off with a sprig of mint. And there you go. A Woodford Reserve Mint Julep. Enjoy. If you're gonna make a butchered mojito with bourbon, at least fill the glass up to the top with ice. It just looks so sad like that. So this next video is gonna be a classic daiquiri. Daiquiri, very popular summer type drink. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna serve it in our stem cocktail glass. So remember whenever we're working with a stem glass, we want to be sure to chill it. Please see two. So while we're chilling our drink, we're gonna prepare our ingredients. Here we have- Bro, stop touching your face. A uh, glass mixing cup. Placing now ice in it. And our recipe calls for one ounce of rum, all right? Here we are, we're using Bacardi Light Rum, very nice rum. There's many different types of rum different colors, but uh, we're using light rum right here. Then what we're going to use is two ounces of our sweet and sour mix. No, no sweet and sour mix on your daiquiri. Daiquiri, rum, syrup, and fresh lime juice. That's it. What the heck's wrong with this guy? Did he like do lines of coke before he filmed this? And what we're going to do is we're going to shake everything together. The reason why we want to shake our ingredients together is because we're using light rum and we're also using our sweet and sour mix, which is sugar. So we want to do not bang the shakers against the, the, the bar like that, especially because one of those tumblers is glass. If that thing shatters, it's going to fall all over your ice. Now the original recipes, if you find any old raw bar books or if you go on the internet, it says juice from uh, fresh lime. Well, Nobody really uh, uses fresh limes anymore. Uh, A, they tend to be expensive. Sometimes they're hard to get because they're out of season. And the degree of sourness will vary with how ripe they are. So most times it's probably a lot easier to go out and buy a commercial brand of sweet and sour mix and mix it like that. Now, will they taste a little better with fresh lime juice? Yes, but uh, they're a lot more work 
and then you have to figure out the proportion of sugar to the lime juice. Ugh. Anyway. That is... The sad part is he knows how to correctly make a daiquiri. He just said himself. And he even admits that it tastes better. This is supposed to be a bartending school. Why are you teaching it the wrong way? That's like telling people to you know, microwave frozen chicken because it's harder to cook fresh chicken. Like, why would you teach students this? And no, limes are not that expensive. Even when they're out of season, you could probably get like four or five for a dollar. When you're buying sweet and sour mix like that, you're not buying lime juice, you're buying chemicals. And yes, the sourness between lime per lime will change, but it's not gonna change so much that you're gonna have to adjust the sugar to compensate for that. Differences between one lime and another are very, very small. Well, that was a little interesting. Um, this next drink is uh, Monkey Gland. Hi, my name is John, and today I'll be preparing a Plymouth Gin Monkey Gland. Start off with a highball full of ice. Ounce and a half of Plymouth Gin. Top it off with some orange juice and a splash of grenadine. And lastly, I'll garnish it with an orange. And there you have it. Monkey gland. So with this drink, he's missing one key ingredient, and that's the absinthe. Um, otherwise, this is just a gin version of a tequila sunrise. I mean, it's not too bad. At least he got most of the ingredients correct. Also, the monkey gland is traditionally uh, served up. So next one is going to be a classic mojito, I think. Hey guys, welcome to my wet bar. Today, I'm going to make a mojito. One of Cuba's oldest cocktails. It comes, the word comes from African word mojo, which means to place a little spell. Did she just say that the word mojito comes from an African word? Africa is a continent. Half of the cup to half of the cup to each, to each glass, half of the mixture to each glass. Is that syrup that's infused with the mint? I think she might have skipped a step. I'm gonna use one part of Bacardi. Look at this one. Okay, and three parts of club soda. I don't know how she's measuring that because she says it was one part rum and three parts soda water, but the amount of soda water that she just poured looks a lot less than how much rum that she poured. Now? Let me make some, let me put some lemon on the side, on a glass. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we are. Cheers. Mmm. Woo! Okay, I think she totally forgot to put lime juice in there. I mean, yeah, she garnished it with some citrus, but. Mojito is rum, lime juice, a sugar, soda water, and mint. So the next drink is a perfect gin martini. Hi, my name is John, and today I'll be preparing a Plymouth Perfect Martini. Let's start off with a little bit of ice, three ounces of Plymouth gin. A little bit of dry vermouth in the martini glass, in and out. A little sweet vermouth. Give it a quick shake. Okay, so why did he toss out the dry vermouth but poured the sweet vermouth into the shaker with the gin? So traditionally when someone orders it dry, sometimes they would just give the, the glass a swirl and toss out the rest just so it gets a little accent of the dry vermouth. So I don't understand why he would toss out one vermouth and keep the other. Additionally, people who order uh, perfect martinis or perfect um, Manhattans, they generally like the flavor of vermouth. Also, don't shake your martinis. Uh, I know that there's this confusion where, you know, James Bond has his uh, martinis shaken, not stirred. His drink was not a martini. It's something called a Vesper, which is more high proof and the shaking does help dilute the, the spirits that are in the drink. But traditionally, when you're ordering a martini, it should be stirred. Okay, so the next drink is uh, El Diablo. Chris Fertula back again for you, Tequila Ranch bartender. So now we make a few called El Diablo. I'm gonna show you how it's made. Start off again, Oro Azul Reposado, about an ounce and a half. Next ingredient, cream the cassis, about an ounce. Did he say cream the cassis? 
Go to good old Rose's Lime Juice. Okay, Rose's Lime Juice is not lime juice. Now the drink is gonna be really, really sweet. And then it's topped up with ginger ale. Oh! Is he gonna shake that? Do not shake carbonated ingredients because the shaker might explode. If you wanna make a drink with a shaken component and a carbonated component, the carbonated component should be added after the shaking. Shaken. Cheers. El Diablo. Okay, so I'm not gonna be too hard on this guy. At least he got the ingredients correct. Except for the roses lime juice, it should be fresh lime juice. Also the technique, you should not shake anything that's carbonated or the shaker might explode. And the drink should be served on the highball glass. So next one is a classic margarita. Today I'm making a classic margarita using a, a Patron Silver. Uh, two ounces of Patron. Gramagne, half an ounce. So the older style of, um, you know, the classic margarita usually calls for triple sec, but that triple sec is uh, generally a Cointreau, not Grand Marnier. And the main difference is that Cointreau, the base is a neutral grain spirit. So it doesn't add a lot of flavor from the spirit itself. And you get more of the flavor of the, the orange peels. Grand Marnier, the base spirit is going to be a cognac base spirit. So it's going to be more bolder. And it's generally not recommended to be inside the margarita because it overtakes the tequila flavor. You can make a Cadillac margarita where you top off the margarita with Grand Marnier, so you could use that as an aromatic. But the classic margarita, generally, you do not want the Grand Marnier inside of the drink. Sour mix. No sour mix in the classic margarita. Splash of uh, roses, lime juice, a splash of it. <sighs> Why are people using roses, lime juice? They have limes there. A squeeze of that lime garnish would have worked a lot better. Squeeze the lime just for, for taste. Okay, so he adds a fresh lime juice in it. So why did he ruin it by putting that Rose's lime juice in it? Classic margarita. Salute. Okay, classic margarita. There's only three ingredients, tequila, triple sec, and fresh lime juice, all right? That's it. Don't overcomplicate it by putting these chemical of uh, sweet and sour mixes or roses lime juice. If you have access to fresh lime juice, just use the fresh lime juice. Okay, next one is an apple martini. Uh, not really a classic cocktail, but let's see what's up. Hi guys, my name is Andrea from Bricks Nightclub and Sunset Lounge. Oh, it's a mint julep lady. You're gonna take one and a half parts Woodford Reserve. Then you're gonna take your apple liqueur, about half parts. Shake it on up. Strain it. Garnish with an apple slice. And there you go. Enjoy. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that recipe. But that apple slice looks a lot like a kiwi. Up next, we have another mint julep. I'm Janae from Mahalo.com, and I'm going to teach you how to make a mint julep. Now, this drink is really popular in the South and also back East, probably because it has bourbon in it, which is really, you know, a Southern type of drink. It's not exactly like a mojito, but it's kind of the idea with the mint. Once again, it is, they are related drinks. And if you have a muddler, great. If you don't, any kind of object, you know, this is fine as well. Basically just to kind of muddle up the mint and get the flavor in there. That's kind of odd. They're going to do a cocktail presentation and not have the correct tools. But again, yeah, you don't really need special tools. You're just bruising the mint. There we go. One. I like mine a little sweeter. So three. Now, if you don't have sugar cubes, but you do have simple syrup in your house, that works as well. You just need some kind of sugar to sweeten it up and kind of mix in with the mint. So we're going to go ahead and mash all these sugar cubes up. So I would not recommend uh, mashing sugar cubes like that dry. It needs something to dissolve in. Otherwise, you're just gonna get a, lots of grains of sugar at the bottom of the glass. Using a simple syrup is definitely recommended. Okay, so now that it's all good and crushed, just gotta get some ice. Go ahead and fill up our glass all the way with ice. Get a little more. There we 
we go. And then you're gonna put two ounces of your bourbon right in there. Oh, oh! All right. Oh! Just to make sure it gets mixed up, kind of, you might wanna. That's not two ounces of bourbon. That was like half of that bottle. Well, anyways, that's a bunch of videos that people have sent me. If you guys enjoyed that video, uh, please also click on this one. And if you haven't done so, uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.